sound guards coming up. <clears throat> Fuck. <clears throat> <clears throat> Don't fucking put that in. That's really gross. Nineteen ninety four was a epic. Nineteen ninety four was an epic year. First of all, I got married then, so there's that. Secondly, OJ, the whole OJ thing happened. That was epic. OJ, who I'm never going to forget. OJ, um, and Soundgarden put out an album called Super Unknown, which at this point is very well known. Produced by Michael Beinhorn, who's a stellar producer. Um, and the song's called The Day I Tried to Live. I've never heard this song as I don't know if I've I don't think I've ever heard this song before. It's not striking a a, a memory, a musical memory for me. So I have come to love Soundgarden at this point, mainly because the students that I teach keep wanting to play their music and every song I love, the writing. The instrumentation, the musicianship, his voice, Chris, Chris Cornell's voice. And I'm so sorry that he's gone. Ugh, what a what a tragedy. Anyway, the day I tried to live, let's clean out the shed. Don't forget to like and subscribe and all that stuff too. I want to stop it right there and just talk really quickly about, I don't know the guitar player's name in this band, but what's his name? Kim Thale. How he's just telling me these things. He is so unique. His sounds, the sounds he gets, the parts that he plays are so original and so cool. Um, I'm always, there, there's always something mysterious and interesting about his parts and his, the sounds that he gets. It's such a sound garden sound. It's his guitars as much as anything else in the band. It's so Soundgarden. When am I going to actually just start listening to this whole record? Because every song I hear from this album is so awesome. Um, if you want to know what time signature they're in, if you don't know, there's a bar of seven and then there's two bars of four. So it's like, it's really just seven and eight, you know, next to each other. That's where the weirdness comes in. And Soundgarden is known for those throwing in odd time signatures in their music. I also want to note another thing. I just the way this album sounds is so it's so fat and punchy and and rock and edgy and I love the sound of this record. Um the bass player and the drummer in this band are they are such a marriage of rhythm. <laughs>
Okay. That's a long chorus. That is a really lengthy chorus. It's longer than a lot of choruses are in like a in a rock song, in a modern rock song. I want to just touch on Chris Cornell's voice for a minute. There is no one who sounds like him. No one. You know from the first note it's him. The um, first of all just the the timbre, the sound of his voice was made to sing this music. His range is insane. And that he feels and puts his emotions into every single note. That's the sign of an artist who really knows their craft. And he, he can move us because he's moved. I've always been attracted to his vocals. Um, and that was a super long chorus. Oh, another thing. Listen to the way the snare drum sounds. This is something about pro album production and engineering, and it has a lot to do with the way that he tunes his snare drum, the actual snare drum that he's using, and also the way it's mixed. Um, it's so it's got this it's got a tone to it that's just kind of trashy, and really fits the song. Like the way this album was produced, it really does capture, I think, the essence of what they were trying to get to. This is why it's such an incredible album. So that snare drum. Okay, and also another thing about dynamics, and I talk about this almost every single reaction video and every cleaning out the shed video, the verses have this tension building thing. They're chill, chiller, it's softer and dynamic, he's lower in his range, everything about it, there's no ride cymbal or crash cymbal. They're leaving that stuff out and saving it for when the chorus, they want to hit you over the head with it. And these things sound, they're, they're so obvious to people who deal with this stuff every day, but these might not be such obvious things to a fan. Like, why do I like this music? Sometimes I try to highlight these things that I think about all the time as a musician and a producer and a songwriter because it kind of pulls back the veil of why we love this music. And as an audience member, as a fan, we may not know these things. So that's that's why I point them out. Not to the not to the musicians, but more to the fans. And they could have easily just stayed in 4-4 the whole song. But the fact that they're throwing us off with that bar of 7, it's like a bar of 4, a bar of 3, 4-4, four, four, or a bar of 7 and a bar of 8, however you want to count it, it's like, uh, it's jarring. There's something jarring about it. There's something that, that throws us off a little bit. And that's what they want to do. That's the way they feel. the right symbol there. And the, the melody. Ba -da 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 -da. 
It's a simple melody that really works. It's something that I can sing later on. It's something I'll remember. It's something that will, it's a great melody. It's a, it's a, I, you know, I don't like to use the word great. It's a singable, simple melody over a more complex bed they got going on there. I, I love Soundgarden, you guys. It's so musically interesting. Breakdown. You know, think about as as songwriters and if guys who may be making their own albums out there who are watching this, think about having a bridge or a breakdown section that's only instrumental, that leaves the vocals out. Just creating something that's musical that gives us a little break from the vocal and just helps continue to create the mood of the song. Something musically interesting. I love the way this album sounds. The sound of it. So thrilling. Seven, eight, one. Another, listen to all the guitars in there. There are so many freaking layers of guitar in there now. And then you got another la layer of vocal coming in, in my left ear. You got layers of vocals flying around too. It's just getting more dense. There's more stuff going on. Um, and you know, you got to understand too, at this time in 1994, they were still recording on analog, through analog desks, analog tape machines, it was a, you know, it was a studio with massive amounts of, of equipment. It's not all in a, in a laptop. And I love digital technology, but they're making this album when doing things like this was a lot more laborious and complex and a lot more, some say, from a, from a sonic perspective, more satisfying it's fat it's juicy the the gear gives you a uh a sonic imprint whatever mic pre you're going through whatever board you're going through whatever tape machine you're hitting all the outboard gear you got gives it this color and um and kind of filtering and all that stuff so um it's a very juicy warm fat punchy analog rock and roll record um and it's adventurous Another ear training exercise you guys can do is just to sing those notes. Bo ba ba ba. Find those notes and sing them, and then find them on your instrument. Now, th they're a little bit in between keys here. I'm wondering if the tape the tape um, speed was a little messed up.
ba bo ba ba or I, I can't tell what key they're in. But but the, what I'm trying to say is people often ask me how I find the notes. Well, I mean, I have good I have really good ear, but I also spent a lot of time figuring out things by ear. Things that were a little difficult for me like jazz solos and stuff. Um the complex, more complex things, and I just labored over them. But something that you guys can do who are frustrated with your own ear, when you find four notes that you you can start, you start singing them. Ba 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 da da da. Sing them along with the record, and then stop it. Get on your instrument and and try to find them, and and don't stop until you get them. It's just a good everyday ear training exercise that you guys can can do. I think they're an E, they're not an F. But that's how off it is. You guys can hear the record in my keyboard's an A440, so. It's a really cool chord progression. These are all major chords. And I think that's minor, but he's probably playing power chords anyway, but. It's so dark. Major chords, if used in the right way, can sound really dark. Super Unknown is Every time I hear a different song from it, I'm more moved by Soundgarden. I think Chris Cornell, um, God bless him, had one of the, I'll just say one of the greatest voices in rock and roll. He really, really did. And he's, he still does. Um, and this is another band that is really a band greater than the sum of their parts. They're all excellent and very skilled and very creative on their own. But when they get together and do this, it's Soundgarden, which is just another entity. Um, huge respect for Soundgarden. I'm so glad this that I now know this, this song. And um, it's an album that I, I'd love to watch uh, some kind of documentary on how it was made. And if Michael Beinhorn would would agree to get interviewed by by us i'd love to interview him to get into his head a little bit um and find out um what his approach is and have, making these records and asking him questions so anyway can you guys make that happen for me um i hope you guys enjoyed that i certainly did i and don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell icon and leave comments um and i hope you guys have a musical day day we have we have cleaned out the shed a little bit more, and it feels good. More time now. Have a musical day.